So this video is probably a little different than what you're used to me making, but I just got these tools here today. Um, actually got them a couple days ago, rather, and I just wanted to make a quick little video just going over to some of these. Um, if networking is not something that you're into, guys, you might just want to click away for this video. But if you're interested in network engineering or just making RJ45 cables, then stick around. I got some tools here that might be able to help you out. Now, these are all under the same brand, under the Klein Tools brand. And when I was doing research, I couldn't afford something like a NetScout or a Fluke Tester because I'm a college student. I'm not made of money. But I thought these were great tools, especially for the price. So let's just get into some of these here. So I'm going to move my way down here. So the first bit here would be the Scout Pro 3. This is a network cable tester. It's a VDV. I'm not sure if it'll be able to focus on there, but it says VDV, which stands for Voice Data and Video, because this does do RJ11 uh, voice cables. So you can test out those, which are for phones, the old pot lines, as they were called, plain old telephone lines. We have data, so that would be the RJ45 cables that we all know and love as the Ethernet cables. That would be the data. And then we have, I think this is an coax F connector, I think? That would be the video. And on the bottom here we have our wire remote, which does come off. It has the coax uh, connector in there. And we still got our RJ45 and RJ11 down there, just kind of snaps on in there. This is the little tab you push down. This is where the 9 volt battery goes. It takes a 9 volt battery. So it did come with one, which is really nice. So there are a couple different models of this. Mine does not have PoE on there. So there's uh, no power over ethernet testing. There is one for that, but I'm going to link mine and all these other tools in the, in the description. So be sure to check those out if these are something that you'd be interested in. I think they're awesome personally, but anyway, so this is the network tester that I'm going to be using. Now, the cool thing about this one is it has a backlight, which I find really nice. I never use it without the backlight. The Scout Pro 2 didn't have one, but this one does. So that's awesome. So just looking at some of the buttons here, we got one for RJ11, coax, and data cable testing. We've also got one for uh, sending tones along wires, which is what that is used for. I'll show you that a little later. This one's for settings. This one's for length. This one turns on and off the backlight and turns off the unit. We'll go a little bit more in depth into this once I get a cable made, because I'll be making a cable in this video, an RJ45 Cat5D cable. Uh, but what you need to know about this right now is it's a really solid network tester and I've done a lot with it. What came with it were these. These are for wall receptacles. This is so you can test uh, RJ45 connectors embedded in your wall. Uh, you might notice that there's a little but or not button, a little ID number on the end of it. That is for identification. So when you plug a cable in or uh, you plug this into a wall and connect that cable to the tester, it'll have a little ID number on there. The little uh, cable here, cable uh, wire map tester here has a one on it. So that'll show up as an ID one. So we can do that for RG45 and coax. Uh, comes with a hefty amount of them, I will say. It's a pretty gratuitous amount for what I'm doing, but it's always good to have a couple extra, I suppose. Next here, we have a pass-through crimper. It does ratchet, by the way, which is actually really satisfying. Uh, this little bit here is pl uh, not plastic, it's rubber. This is plastic, but this is rubber. This is also rubberized here, too, so it makes a really nice grip. Um, we'll also see here that you got the wiring diagrams for RJ45 crossover and straight through and RJ11 uh, as well because this does do RJ45 and RJ11 crimping. It also does stripping and cutting as you can see there. Uh, this is a nice little override so if you get something stuck twist that to the side and it comes right off no matter where it is. That's awesome I actually really like that. Now when I said it was a pass through that's because it has this little blade there. So it's used with um, pass-through cable ends for RJ45 and RJ11. I'll show you how that works a little bit later because I am going to be again making a cable. That's basically what that does. It, there's not much to go into it but I will say pass-through is so much better than uh, the closed back cables because this crimper cuts them off uh, the little cable ends. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now we also have a toner here as well. This toner 
is used in conjunction with, um, you can get a separate thing with this that puts tones on wires, but the Scout Pro 3 already does that, so I didn't need to buy that. So you would be able to send a tone over the wire by pressing this button, and if you need help detecting which cable's which, this is a great tester to do that. Uh, I've actually used it a couple times in my house just to test out how long it goes, what noises does it make, how sensitive it is. I think it's about the right sensitivity for what I'm doing. Oh, it also has a flashlight on it. You don't even need to have it on for it, so that's awesome. Uh, you, like, like you don't need to turn on the thing, you can just... You can, but eh, I think that's actually really useful, personally. So that's just a quick little overview at, as to what we're looking at here, but we're gonna be making a cable in this video. So I'm gonna grab some UTP cabling here. This is going to be Cat 5e cabling. So we're just gonna get out a little bit here. So I'm gonna be making a cable with these tools specifically. So we're just gonna make a nice little cut here. So we're just gonna cut that off. There we go. Move that out of my way. All right. So I'm not gonna be going in depth on how to make cables in this video. But if you do want to learn how to make cables, I'd be more than happy to make a video about that at some point here. So we're just going to strip this cable about eh, right there. So put it in the shrimping hole. Stripping hole, excuse me. Oop, it's uh, that centered there. There we are. So now if I rotate it back and forth, comes right off. Uh, we'll throw that in the uh, cable snippings box or bin. That's where I put all my failed cables. All right, now as you can see, it is UTP cabling. It's unshielded twisted pairs. Oh, I got a nice little piece of uh, Kevlar in the middle there. Just gonna cut that off. Oh, it landed right on the Scout Pro. Get out of here. All right, so I'm gonna speed through this a little bit. Um, so feel free to uh, pause the video if you'd like, but I'm gonna speed through me making this cable. So uh, enjoy the nice little montage, I suppose. So I think we got our cable all the way made here. So I got some pass-through cable ends here that I'm gonna open up. Take one of them out here. Pick your favorite, I suppose. All right. So now, uh, I actually took my hand off of this, so I will have to reorganize the wires slightly. And there we go. So I'm just gonna move these closer together again. Oop, I mean to bump the tripod there. Okay. There we go. It's just, oh geez, I can't stop bumping that tripod. It's like right in front of me, so I'm doing this at a weird angle. All right. So the best thing about pass-through cable is gotta make sure that tab is down, first of all. Um, I don't know if this is gonna go all the way through, but we can test it here. Ah, yep, there we go. So the best thing about these cables is once you pass the wires through, you can see if you did it right. So we can see that we got Orange, white, orange, orange, green, white, green, blue, blue, white, blue, green, brown, white, brown, and brown. So that is exactly the cable format that we want. So we're just gonna push that through because I'm just making a straight through cable here. We're not doing anything fancy with crossovers or nothing. All right, so now you see that the wires are sticking out. So with this crimper, that blade is gonna cut it right off for us. So we're just gonna set those in here. We're gonna put those through. All right, now this comes the satisfying part, crimping it. Here we go. Look at that. Come right off. Look at that cut. Perfect every friggin' time. All right. They get everywhere. Eh, get off. All right. So I'm gonna speed through making this cable end again here. You won't need to watch me make it or anything. So I'll be back to you once this cable ends made. Did you really think I was just like not gonna show you this crimping again? You feel bad for yourself. Come on, man. I'm, a, I'm, I'm here to make quality content. All right, so we're just gonna push this through the top here again, right through there, and we're gonna crimp her down. Look at that. Crimps right off it. Not for there. Look at that. Another well-made cable, and look at that. No overhang whatsoever. So now we got ourselves an RJ45 cable. So let's plug it into the top of the tester here and the bottom of the tester here, and let's test it. 
This is his ID one because we're connected to the bottom. Let's see what it says. Hit that reflection. But as you can see, it says it's a pass. So these are what the wires should be. And this is what the wires are. So if there was a crossover cable, a couple of these would be switched around uh, as the orange and greens would be switched and to be crossed over. Uh, I have a crossover cable somewhere around here, so I'm actually going to go grab that to show you what it would say if it was a crossover. Luckily, I have a crossover cable just chilling over on my bed, so I'm going to just unplug that. And I'll plug in this crossover cable real quick and show you what it'll say if it is a crossover. This is an older crossover cable I made. Alright, so let's take a look here and see what it says. Ah, yep. You can see, ah, didn't mean to hit the camera there. It says pass and it's a crossover cable. As you can see, a couple of the numbers are switched. So that's something to keep in mind. So I would definitely say that this tester works really well. And another thing that it can do is detect length. So let's plug this back in here and see how long our cable is. So we're gonna press the length button here. is four feet. Now it's measuring wires one and two right now. You can change that by using the up and down arrows here because there's that little triangle symbol which means ups and downs. So we got four, 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 four. So yeah, and since this part is detachable, you don't need to have it attached or anything to read it, but I usually just keep it attached unless if I'm doing a long length measurement or something. So that's awesome. All right, so we're gonna unplug this real quick. Well, actually, we should leave it plugged in because we're going to test out the toner here, actually. So I'm going to send a tone over this wire. Uh, let's do an 800 hertz tone. So as you can see, 800 hertz. We're sending it across all wires. So if I turn on my toner here, we turn that up a little bit so you can hear it. I'm going to bring it closer to the wire here. So that's how the toner works. It sends a, an electrical signal over the wire, which makes a tone, which is really awesome. You can actually change the uh, pitch of it too. This is 1000 hertz, 1200, 1400, 1500, and I'll even have one where it'll go back and forth between a couple tones. So that's essentially how the toner works, which I would say is really useful. Now, I will say that some wires just are too long. It just won't generate enough signal to have it go over the entirety of the wire. So what happens then? Well, actually something that you can do is it has a hub link feature. So if I hold down on the tone button, you'll see on there it says hub. What that does is if this is connected to a router or a switch, it'll actually make the lights blink in a specific pattern when it's connected to that device. And as a matter of fact, I can show you. So give me just a second, I can get this hooked up to my actual uh, wireless home router and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so you'll kind of have to forgive the kind of crappy setup that I'm doing this with. Uh, my router usually sits on top of my server so I can get some airflow from the top fans there. But what's, what's going to happen is you see that light blinking right there that's coming in from the wall. What's going to happen is I'm going to have that port blink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the tester, turn on the backlight. We're going to turn on the hub blink. Hi, kitty. Thank you for coming in. So now you'll see where it blinks hub and you'll see that light turn on. It's this one right there. Yep. There you go. You can see that. So I think this is actually a really, really useful feature if you're looking for a certain cable uh, and the toner just doesn't have the amount of power to be able to be heard. Because I can definitely say when you have cables running in conduits from a long ways away, uh, the signal's going to be pretty weak. So this is actually really nice. At the end of the day, what do I... Oh, this is all dirty. Now let's clean this up a little bit. It'll give me some time to use my uh, cable snippings thingy ma bobber which is actually kind of a little full already ah there we go all nice spick and span 
So, what do I think about all the Klein Tools suite here that I got going on for cable making? I would agree, Little Prince. I think that they're a great deal. I would think that it's almost a steal for what you get here. Now, I will say, I did get these two in like a combo pack, which is like a little bit cheaper than buying these separately, which is essentially what it did, just at a reduced price. Thanks, Amazon. But I definitely think that if you do any cable testing, or even for home use, uh, I agree, I do think it's great for the price, you know? I, I don't have any gripes with these, like, at all. I mean, I guess the only gripe I kind of have is that the stripping only really works if you pull it up, but, I mean, that that's like small pickings here, you know? So, would I recommend this to people that are getting into networking? Maybe. Mainly because if you don't know if networking's your thing, this is still like almost 300 bucks around there for everything here. But if you are really into networking, or you do home testing and stuff, or hell, maybe you're even an electrician that does RJ11 every once in a while and does some RJ45 stuff, I would definitely say that this, for the price, is amazing for what you get here. So, if you're looking into getting into networking, or you just generally want to try your hand at making some cables, get some unshielded twisted pair Cat 5e cabling, uh, get yourself some pass-through cable lens, make sure to get the pass-through ones so you can take full advantage of the Klein Tools crimper, cutter, and stripper here. So, I would definitely say that it is great for the price. But if you're not really sure if you want to get into networking, I maybe would hold off on this. Mainly because there's a kit on Amazon uh, right here that is actually very good for the price. It's kind of meh here. I've noticed the cutters, like the uh, little cutters there are kind of crap. But yeah, he knows what I'm talking about. But for the most part, it's an RA kit for getting into making cables. So, I want to thank you all for watching this very different video from me. If you actually really like this format, please let me know because I really want to make more networking focused videos on my channel considering that's my profession and uh, loving this dank pod style I got going on here. But thank you all for watching everyone. I really appreciate you sticking around to the end. You're the reason that this channel actually exists in the first place. So, thank you all for watching and as I always say, Arrivederci.